Having body image concerns is a relatively common experience and is not a mental health issue or problem in and of itself. However, it can be a risk factor for many mental health problems. If you've suffered from anxiety, depression, shame, or self-consciousness due to your weight or appearance or feeling like somehow you just don't belong, pay attention. This video is absolutely for you. I'm gonna share with you some tips and tricks on how to help cope with that and maybe help you understand that you are not alone. Join me now, watch. So one of the things I've been documenting, this is whew, my bloatedness. All healthy foods though. So I'm eating healthy. And that's kind of the haha -ha issues of what somebody can tolerate or what they can't. Okay, so I'm making, and I know this, by the afternoon, I'm so bloated, I can't do anything, the pain is so bad. I've been working through a lot of issues that I've been working out myself. So there's a psychological component underneath healing trauma, which though for many people would relate to a lot of things. Cause when it comes to how do you judge your body, look at yourself, um, you know, have you had been under a spotlight where you've had to, or you haven't, right? Some people have had addictions to food. Some people don't. Some people don't realize though, if they had to be restricted so later in life, if they were told, hey, you have to change your diet because of health reasons, they can't be, or, or they have a, a hard time because they've never had to be restricted versus, versus has these restrictions, where did they come from? And I say that because I had to put myself, stop coaching, um, and start actually being a student to my own program. And the first steps of that is uncovering a lot of the layers. So it's been about two years that that eating disorder was re-triggered. However, I eat healthier than probably 90 something percent of the population. I'm not anorexic or bulimic. I don't really even overeat or binge eat. It's the thoughts around that. So the obsession and then the obsession with the link of my appearance and my self-worth, which I've been working through and letting go of because it's a value thing. But also then coming back to the practical things of, hey, your body does not tolerate this. Okay, then there's the knowledge component that I have the knowledge of what to do to switch to, but why don't I do that, the obsession? Well, there's also then the links and the cravings, which that's what I'm working through with the PTSD component. And I have to prove these theories and letting my body work through things of, of pain. So, you know, uh, brain fog, chronic fatigue, all, all of those things, and, but being brutally honest. So it's like you have to recognize the role you play in your own suffering and why you're keeping yourself sick. Well, there's a self-worth component thing, right? Dealing with all the stresses, a mazel hierarchy of needs thing. Um, cravings and addictions and that core and for all addictions and the theory that I have it's lack of self-worth and self-love and it can be in different areas for different things and I look back even at my videos as I was documenting this process and how I, the eyes you see and you see on yourself and how you judge yourself um, you know as I was gaining weight I was looking at a person I was watching and I was seeing somebody who was to me in my eyes right i'm looking like a monster a beast uh, so ugly i'm so disgusted by myself i rewatch those videos and go oh my god i can't believe i was what eyes was i looking at well i have that issue now still i recognize so that's why somebody can say you're beautiful you look good in one area and and if you don't see it it doesn't matter and that's also the misconceptions of anorexia. I've never restricted food in my life, but that's ironically because of having a mother who is severely anorexic and bulimic. That is in my head of the judgments of what I see. So as soon as I'm told or restricted on something, ironically, I do the exact opposite because I don't do well with restrictions and discipline, which is ironically what I need. So, so P, but, but I would say to somebody, if they were in that same process, if I were to give you a diet or a food plan, if you can't follow that, or only for a couple days, it could be the component that one, it's not the right meal plan to fit your lifestyle, or it could be, okay, you have to go deeper into the psychological piece. And that's what I've been working through so that I could heal on so many levels because my entire life, 
minus the period of about 10 years, I always, maybe, maybe less than 10 years, but had extreme autoimmune diseases or different things that the doctors could never explain or go undiagnosed. And I'm still facing that now today. And as the extreme pain of the chronic illnesses and all those things come back, we can heal through food, yes, but also through the brain. And there's a both. And it doesn't mean you have to be for the rest of your life restricted on something. So if somebody were to have, let's say, okay, they diagnosed with cancer and they went through the protocols, right, of, you know, a lot, they, there's debates. So if you clean out, you know, 40 days of fasting, um, you can clean out and rebuild bodies. You can do, you know, alkaline diets, da, 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 da. Well, that is hard to do. Okay, you have the diet. Well, there's a willpower component, but it's more than willpower. What does that attach to? It's the same kind of theories. Okay, now you can't. Well, why not? What's that restriction? So now you're choosing to harm your body instead of help it. Well, that's the cycle of an addict. And the cycle of an addict and that role has to do with our self-worth and our values. And for myself, my my story, um, that being attached so much, being told only about my appearance and when I'm not that, I'm not worthy. And then also with... Um, being really a victim of so many sex crimes and, and made that to be belief and then confusion and if I was anything less than perfect or presented anything less than perfect then I'm not worthy and that actually goes to when I was felt loved then I was healed ironically when I felt loved but then when I realized I lost that love but the irony is if you give that away that's a distraction you have to love yourself and that's the one thing that I never knew how to do so the process of this in the last number of years was learning that so when you're by yourself any addict on anything. So for my, I, you know, if you're a person, if it's, if it's alcohol you've turned to, if it's drugs, if it's whatever, forgive yourself for for that to understand it. But that is a core. That is, it's like you're not okay with yourself because there's you have to get to the root of that and that. Okay, where does that come from? So as I say that here, and I've had said it's all healthy stuff. This that and the other thing. Well, it doesn't seem to be reacting well to my body. So I'm gonna, right, and I'm aware that, okay, so how can I clean this out? How can I get stronger to get to the next thing, to get to the next thing? And that's as I've cleared more and more layers of everything to, I have to, I, you know, it's like the universe's test. Can just go back and be a student of your own programs to make sure that you really are telling the truth. It's kind of like the irony of if you were a, a business person or whatever, you, you started a company or running a company and you've, you know, and then you forget on like what it's like to be back right within the people or in you know the base of that with your customers you'd almost have to be like an undercover boss and go back in and redo it and and, and, and you know because that's the cycle you want to make sure it's the right thing and if you've been the boss without ever being in the field ha ha right that would be no good so same thing if you've you've been studying programs um and then teaching them but you've never actually been through the process of it yourself and proven that that's the right thing then you're not really qualified. And I went, wow, the universe is testing me to make sure I'm leveling up and qualifying. And I take that as an opportunity experience. So it's like self experiment, experimenting on myself, but I'd invite any person because it's our bodies, right? Here's our microchip is our brain. This is our robot. Where are we taking it? Or how are we treating it? How are we breaking it down and rebuilding it constantly? How are we talking to ourselves? And I was taught, um, you're, you know, it's shameful to, respect and love yourself that's what i was taught and that's where the self-sabotage comes from so it's hard under i can big up everybody else around me but not myself and that's ironically why i had to get rid of the things around me to learn that and i'm still in that process and then i'll invite people back into my life but i'm it's, that's the i have to heal first so i would recommend that to one and this is the documenting process of that to see what happens